What's up everyone, Angus here back with a brand new video for you and today we are going to be covering this Mortar 2.9 deck made by Woody. Credits to him for making such an awesome deck but we are going to be going through this deck and how to play it correctly in early game, mid game and late game. So this deck by the way is suitable for almost any arena and we are going to be going through this really quickly and we are going to be showing you how to use this deck and the common mistakes that I see a lot of newer players using this deck make. So without further ado, let's get right into it without wasting any more time whatsoever. Alright, we are back and now let's get right into the early game section. So early game, a lot of players, especially the newer ones, I see them making the same mistake over and over again. Basically, what you're trying to do in early game is you're trying to figure out the cards that your opponent has and the counters to the more to your mortar. So a lot of players I see they like to place their mortar as their first card right on the bridge and they think that this deck is sort of an aggressive deck and I totally disagree with that. This deck you're basically in the early game you're trying to bait out whatever sort of win condition they have. Let's say this deck, this guy has a hot rider. So you're trying to make him use it so you can use your mortar to counter it. Or let's say if he has a royal giant, then you're screwed if if you don't have your mortar in hand. So uh, that's basically why you need to play this deck slowly. Just the optimal starting moves that I like to make are usually archers, uh, split at the back, or I spirit at the I spirit on the bridge, and maybe skeleton skeletons at the back. Yeah, the three of those are the most optimal moves that you are going to make while playing this deck early game. So as you can see, I'm just trying to figure out what type of cards he has. So not really knowing what what deck he's using yet. Pretty weird deck in my opinion. Not really seeing a lot of barbarians anymore, but as you can see, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to clear everything out before I use, I'm using my mortar. And here, as you can see, just because I didn't use my mortar just now, I'm able to defend this hot rider and get a shot in his tower really luckily. So that's basically it for the early game section, and let's hop right into the mid game. All right, so approaching mid game, which I like to call the two minute mark in the game. As you can see, the time is at. 159 and basically the first minutes just to recap you are trying to figure out your opponent's win condition and play around his win condition and not into it so uh, once you figure out what his win condition is and what basically his cards his cards are you now are trying to basically use your mortar after your opponent uses his win condition so basically let's say he has a royal giant and he plays it on the bridge First off, you use your mortar to defend the royal giant and after that, once you have defended it, you have, you should be cycling back to your mortar once again and playing it on the bridge right before he has his royal giant back in cycle again. So this tactic is what I normally use to defeat royal giant players and I hope hopefully this will be able to help you as well in your games. And after you have gotten that mortar in and he does not have his royal giant in hand, you are basically set because he now has nothing to counter your your mortar and basically just keep doing this and usually people and a common mistake I, I see a lot of people making usually the newer players as well is they tend to over defend their mortar so in my opinion two to three shots by a, a mortar is already extremely enough and I like to take two, two shots uh, sort of a success so one shot is alright but two shots I'm really satisfied so here as you can see, I'm trying to defend his Barbarians while getting a few shots in. Hopefully not getting shots this time, but I'll try again later on. And that's almost it for the mid game section. And in this, in this part of the game, you are trying not to use your rocket as much. And try to save your rocket until double elixir time. Don't start using it too early unless, of course, you face uh, elixir pumps. And if you're facing elixir pumps, what I what I tend to do is I always rocket them no matter what. So maybe if you're hesitant hesitant to rocket the pumps that are in the middle, just because you can't get any tower value, don't worry guys. You always always want to rocket the elixir pumps because uh, elixir pumps are really are really deadly uh, against any matchup basically, and you want to take them out as quickly as possible. Let's say if you're playing three musketeers, and if you don't take them out in time you are basically screwed for the rest of the game because they have a massive elixir lead on you and you have no way of coming back after a huge elixir deficit so all right that's basically for the mid game section let's hop right into the 
late game section. Alright, so adding on to the mid game section before we hop right into the late game section. On what I said just now about not using your rockets in mid game, there's an exception to it. So if you can get amazing value, for example, your opponent has maybe uh, a bowler coming in at you and he's starting in from the back and just so happens that that's the tower that you're attacking so don't be afraid to use your rocket on that if you know that you won't you will be able to defend his push after you rocketed his tower and also if let's say he has a bowler same instance as just now but you know he has a pump uh, and he doesn't he hasn't played his pump yet but he plays a bowler at the back so you are really tempted to rocket it but Always remember, pump is your number one priority for your rocket. You want to primarily rocket the pump, and as that is your, that is the thing you must kill in every single game. You can't let them get a single elixir off the pump. It's like your number one enemy in the game. So basically, just target the pump until it's dead, and don't let it go. You can't let them get away with the extra elixir. All right, moving on. All right, so going into overtime slash double elixir section, this is the most important section of the game. It determines whether you win, lose, or draw the game. So coming to this time, you basically, you most likely already have about a thousand HP plus off his tower. If not, then I'll talk about drawing a bit later. But if you have his tower within uh, three rockets, so uh, what what I like to do is I like to calculate. Uh, how many? How much damage three of my rockets do? So take out a calculator and calculate how much that that does after this video. And this is actually a really good tip that I can give to you guys: is calculate how much damage all three of your rockets do. And once you have done that, tell me the answers in the comment section down below. Actually, no, I don't do it. But uh, for my instance, I need about a thousand seven hundred and fifty HP left on his tower before I can use my. I can start rocket cycling because. Uh, if you start rocket cycling too early, let's say your opponent has about 2300 HP on his tower, that's about 4 rockets for me. 4 rockets in total is about... Uh, how much is that actually? That's about 24 elixir in total, so you are going to be wasting 24 elixir which is huge for your opponent. So only rocket cycle when you have 3, three rockets three rockets off his tower or there's, a, there's an exception, exception for that. Only if you know that you can really confidently uh, defend your opponent's push, only you can start using 4 rockets. 4 rockets is the maximum. You don't want to go above 4 rockets on your opponent's tower. And alright, so apart from that, let's talk about drawing. So, drawing. Um, obviously, the most optimal way is obviously to win. But in some, in some situations, you are forced to draw. And that's basic, that's re absolutely acceptable. Some people see drawing as losing, but think about it. You're actually gaining zero trophies rather than losing like thirty. So, what's what's the problem of I don't I don't know what's the problem of drawing in the first place? A lot of people don't like drawing for some reason, but drawing basically doesn't guarantee you trophies or lose you any trophies. So it's really optimal in some circumstances. So let's say your opponent has a really large elixir, not an elixir, yeah, okay maybe, yeah your opponent has a large elixir lead on you and a large tower damage lead on you as well and you have, I don't know, a hundred HP on his tower for example, there's no way you're gonna win during overtime with this deck, this deck is um, basically a sort of mid game-ish deck, you can't make some sort of monster comeback in double elixir time and most people what i what i recommend a lot of you start doing is you start drawing instead of losing that's that's really a key tip of using this deck properly and climbing trophies the most in the most efficient way possible is learning how to draw and drawing basically you don't do anything but just defend their pushes and just stall until overtime ends and hopefully just don't take any damage don't take any risk whatsoever just try to defend your virginity as well as you can and that's basically it for this deck and let's go through a few play by plays with this deck and let's call it a wrap all right before you get into before you get into the play by play let's do a really quick recap on what we have just learned just now so start of the game which is the three elixir mark start slow don't play this deck too aggressively you're trying to play as passively as possible at the start start with archers or Ice spirits or your skeletons at the back and figure out what their win conditions are for, like, for example Royal Jenna Hot Rider 
and play around them, defend them and play around them and cycle back to your card after that. So, two elixir mark or the mid game mark, use your motor to counter his win condition and cycle back to counter attack. As I just said just now, and let's continue to the next one. Don't over defend your mortar uh, in mid game uh, as you don't want to fall back on elixir. Always just defend the sufficient amount that your opponent has played. Uh, the, it, almost equivalent, equivalent to the amount of elixir your opponent has played on the map. And don't over defend, usually two hits is sufficient. And only use your rockets in mid game if you can get amazing tower value or if you can uh, guarantee damage on his tower and if you can get a lead because of that and you're able to defend his push as well all right so late game the most important part of the game rocket cycle when you are three rockets when you triggers away from taking on his tower or an exception an exception to that is four rockets if you can really comfortably defend all his pushes with ease and learning when to draw is also very important and yeah that's basically it so let's hop into the play by play without further Alright, so starting hand, we have Rocket, Mortar, Ice Spirit, and Lock. So I like to start with Ice Spirit because I never want to start with Mortar. And I'm stuck in an awkward cycle right now. So I just I just decide to lock his Ice Wizard because I have nothing else to do. And I don't really have to worry about bait decks because, of course, I have my uh, I have my arrows in hand as well. So this deck is actually really good against bait decks. So you shouldn't be losing against bait decks if you play against it. So here, as you can see, I'm, as, as I know his wing condition is a minor, I don't really have to worry about Royal Giant. So I comf comfortably play my motor on the bridge, but unfortunately, he has an Infernal Tower. So my motor isn't going to get any damage at all, which is totally fine by me. I'm just going to play it slow right now, just just work out what, card, what other cards he has in his deck. So Spear Goblins, right now what we see are Spear Goblins, Minor, uh, Spear Goblins, Minor, Lock and Ice Wizard and Inferno Tower of course. So this is guaranteed gonna be a bait deck. And his barbarians in the middle are kind of unexpected, but that's a well played that's a well played by him because if my motor destroys the two barbarians in front of it, it's gonna it's gonna get attracted by the ones that are on the other side. So well played by him. And here I identify that it's a far barrel and I didn't lock right away. So a tip on ident identifying that is always wanna look at the shadow and just with, with a lot of experience, you can tell, you can immediately tell if it's a far barrel or it's, if it's a close barrel. So here I know that he's quite low on elixir, so I, I just play a motor on the bridge just to get a few shots in. And here we get two shots in, which is really nice for us. We would have appreciated a third shot, but didn't get that, unfortunately. And here we have our arrows in hand once again. So no worries on bait decks. So approaching late game here so we already have a thousand hits of a, a thousand damage off on his tower so here we are just trying to defend and rocket cycle hopefully and here i just an, ex an exception to rocket cycling i already have troops on the map here so just because i'm going for the same tower as well i i rather play a rocket no i rather play a mortar instead of a rocket maybe get like one or two shots in and because my and because his tower is quite far away i need about four rockets to take it out so I rather not take the risk and let and take the motor hit instead. So here I see that I can get value from the ice wizard. So I immediately take the rocket, and that worked out quite well for me actually. As you can see, I can really comfortably defend his push over here. Just again, nothing to worry about the goblin barrels. They're not really a threat to me at this moment. So here I'm just trying to defend once again. Probably should have rocket cycled over here instead of playing the mortar, but it worked anyways. So uh, let's just defend again. And here just trying to get ship damage as much as I can and here we get a lock on on his tower which is really nice for us so that's about I think about three mortar hits and we can start using two rockets to take out his tower with ease and the beneficial thing about this deck is that it's really really cheap and the best thing about it is that you can really upgrade your cards rapidly as all the cards are basically common cards except for the rocket so tips on upgrading cards in this deck First off, I would strongly advise you to start upgrading all the cards to about level 10. And after that, I work on my archers first. Archers are really important in this deck. They are the only source of air counters in your deck. So if your archers can get one-shotted by arrows, that's really, really bad for you. You must immediately upgrade your archers if they can get one-shotted. And after archers, I would go for my mortar because that's obviously my win condition and high level the mortar it is. You know, the high level your mortar, the better it is, obviously. After that, I'd go for 
uh, I'd probably go for my Ice Spirit and my Knight after that, Skeletons and Rocket, I usually just get it, I don't really request for Rockets that much, it's not really a big, my biggest concern at the moment and yeah, that's basically, that's basically it, that's not really much about it anymore, so Right, that's the card order that I usually like to upgrade. As you can see, I'm working on my I worked on my mortar first, which is which was kind of bad for me. As I just said, archers are really are really uh, fragile in this deck, so go for archers first. All right, so another play by play against a golem deck this time. So as you can see, he has pump in his hand, and I have, I have no rocket yet. So really unfortunate start for me. He's gonna pump right at the start, and I'm gonna cycle my skeletons at the back. And looking at his pump, I was kind of, I was kind of triggered actually because of not, I, I didn't have my rocket in cycle, so I had to waste a total of four elixir before I can get, I can get to my rocket. So he has a huge elixir lead at the moment. So it could be either golem or three musketeers at this point. Uh, no, looking at his pump, so looking at his, so I saw his golem and I tried to play it slow, just using a quick knight at the back just so I can cycle to my, to my mortar again and as I said just now you want to defend their pushes and play and play your mortar after you defend them so here yeah, I'm just waiting for his moves and he unexpectedly plays three musketeers on bridge which was kind of an, which was kind of a surprise to me so I didn't really panic that much as you can see but unfortunately though I missed the I missed the minions which was kind of unfortunate because I didn't know he had him he had minions in hand obviously if not I would have saved my arrows for them but at this point, as you can see, he has more damage on my left tower, so I opt to go for my mortar on the right side, just so he can't, if he has lightning, so he can't play his lightning on my mortar and my tower at the same time. So here, as you can see, my mortar gets like two shots in, which is really good for me. And here, I'm, I have an epic, I had an epic fail uh, by luring the baby dragon. But oh well, as you can see, luckily I went for the, his outer tower as, because if I didn't, his baby dragon would have gotten a lot of damage on my left tower and I would have been in an even bigger deficit. But since I went for his right tower instead, now both of, our, both of my towers are equal in HP, which is really beneficial for me at this moment. So here I'm just playing it slow again, trying to defend my archers. And I play my mortar once again. And he plays his pump, I believe. Uh, yeah, I, I have no idea why he did that, but that was his mistake. He probably should have just went with three musketeers or something. Pump in, at this point isn't really that good for him. As you can see, I just used my rocket and I took that out with ease, and I'm I'm getting a ton of mortar hits on his tower, which is really really good for me at this moment. So defending against Golem, placing a mortar right in the center. The placement I like to use is four three or three four. I'm not sure, but four towers from the river and. Uh, to the opposite side that his golem is coming from which, which I'm just trying to maximize the distance as much as possible to make him walk as long as I can and here I anticipated him uh, using his three musketeers on the bridge so I predictively played uh, my knight on the bridge right in front of the bridge so I could stall the three musketeers there for a few seconds and here I get another another sweet mortar in and we get a ton of damage from this I'm just trying to defend it and Talking about this, as you can see, I'm not over defending, I'm not spamming everything at it, but since it's double elixir, I can afford to spend a, a slight bit more elixir on it, and here we get a, a really awesome connection on the tower with, it, with my mortar, and we take the dub. Alright, so that's basically it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions on this mortar deck, be, be sure to ask them in the comment section down below. If you want me to go more in depth on how to use this deck against certain matchups, please comment them down below and I hope you guys have you guys have benefited from this video and I hope to see you with me here in Challenger 2 soon and hopefully you can make that last stretch to the next arena that you're in. So thank you and have a nice day.